Yeah, the United States yesterday uh, announced that they've established a, uh, a uh, coalition, an international mission, to counter attacks on the commercial vessels in the Red Sea. Uh, it includes 10 countries, uh, uh, noticeably absent uh, from, from the list of some key countries that are, uh, uh, that are relevant to this. So the, the 10 countries in the United States, obviously, United Kingdom, Bahrain, which is the only Arab country, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, sh sh the Shells, which is fascinating. What, what the hell does the shell, sh sh Shells uh, has to, have to contribute? And Spain. Um, uh, not clear what this coalition is going to do. Not clear how this coalition is going to respond to attacks on the shipping. Not clear if this uh, coalition is going to take any kind of action against the Houthis directly or just be defensive. None of this is clear, uh, so it'll be interesting what actually happens. The Houthis, it seems like, have already backtracked a little bit out of a fear for this, or, or maybe the Iranian overlords have told them to back off uh, and have said they'll only attack Israeli ships. It'll be interesting. Does this international coalition then defend uh, Israeli ships uh, in addition to international shipping? It, missing from this coalition, of course, is Israel. Notice that whenever there's an international coalition to do something— they never invite Israel in order to appease the Arabs. This is the United States, typical. It was in 91, uh, the coalition to beat back Saddam Hussein from Kuwait. It was in, uh, before the, uh, after 9-11, the coalition of the willing or whatever. Uh, Israel was not invited. So Israel's never invited, even though it's clearly, uh, it, you know, motivated, incentivized, uh, and, and would join eagerly. It's never invited because the United States cares more about appeasing the Arab world than actually for, forming coalitions that actually can win and actually uh, forming coalitions that are meaningful. It's also interesting that Saudi Arabia is not part of this coalition. Jordan is not part of this coalition, even though they have a strong interest in this. And maybe the country that has the most interest in it uh, is Egypt. Now, I did want to show, I want to show you a, whoops, let me do this. Where is this? I want to show you. Oh, it's disappeared on me. Oh no, it was an, it was another tab. All right, there it is. I want to show you a map because I, I want to make sure that we all. This is this is what we're talking about. Um, you can see, uh, you can see Saudi Arabia. You can see Yemen there. That's where the Houthis are. They're fighting a civil war with the Yemenite government, who will control Yemen. It's been going on for a long time. Saudi Arabia uh, is has been on the side of the Yemeni government. And uh, the Houthis on the side uh, has Iran on its side. There's currently kind of a, in a sense, a ceasefire because the Saudi Arabians and the, uh, and the Iranians have made up. So uh, there's kind of a ceasefire right now. But you can see that tiny little strait over there, right? That tiny little uh, 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 separation between Africa and Asia, which all boats have to travel through. Now, note, if you continue the Red Sea a little bit further, you'll get the Sinai Peninsula split into two. If you go to the left, to the west, that, that ultimately becomes the Suez Canal, and that's the route directly to Europe. And if you go to the right, it goes to Elat and Aqaba. Elat is a port, uh, an Israel, uh, Israeli port. Aqaba is a port on the Jordanian port, uh, coast. Uh, Aqaba is actually the only port Jordan has. So any shipping has to go through here. Any, sh any, any imports to Jordan that come by boat have to go through here to get to Aqaba. So you think Jordan would have a huge incentive. Egypt has a huge incentive because it controls the Suez Canal. And of course, uh, the Suez Canal is a massive source of revenue uh, uh, for Egypt. So in general, you know, uh, um, this is... Uh, one of the most important shipping, what do you call it, uh, 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 you know, narrows uh, shipping um, uh, uh, areas in the world. Uh, uh, everything that goes to the Suez Canal has to go through here. No other way. The only other way to get to Europe is go around Africa. Around Africa. So just thought a map oh, oh, up above Yemen is Oman. Saudi Arabia, you can see on the other side of the straits, you get Djibouti, uh, Eritrea, Sudan, Somalia. You can see this is where the Somali pirates operated. This is why it was such a big deal when they did operate. 
um, and, and why by constraining that strait between Djibouti and Yemen, uh, you can shut down a big portion of global shipping. Uh, another challenge that global shipping has right now is the fact that the Panama Canal, to a large extent, is shut down. They were shut down because there's just not enough water because of drought conditions in Panama. Uh, there's not enough water. I, I didn't even know that it required kind of uh, fresh water to fill the canal. I thought it was all from the ocean. Uh, but uh, the Panama Canal is is functioning at, ve at a very low level, and therefore very few ships are traveling there. So generally, to get from Asia to Europe, is super difficult and super expensive these days. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see increasing cost of goods resulting from the supply crunch created uh, by all of that. All right. Um, where are we? So that's what's going on at sea. We will keep track of kind of this coalition, international coalition, to see what happens.